Hey, everybody. Excuse me. I'm in the middle of eating dinner, too. Uh, this is Soferno 11. Welcome back. Or what, This isn't a series, so welcome to Warframe 100. Uh, as I was playing the game, and as I've been helping out new players, I noticed a lot of them don't understand the game. And it's not... For those of you who play MMOs, there are always people that will constantly just ask things like, hey, how to do this, even though not three seconds ago someone posted exactly how to do that. It's people that are, they're not being lazy, but like they, they don't listen, they don't really read, they don't try to find out the information for themselves. The people that I talked to were different, like they were gamers, they knew how the game, they, they knew how to game, and they knew how to get good, but Warframe does not make that easy for new players. Uh, so, as I was talking to a couple of new players, I'm just like, wow, you know, this this doesn't really make sense. I don't understand what's going on. How, how do I, how, what do I do? What does this do? How do I become better? What is your opinion on this? And a lot of the questions they were asking weren't stupid questions. They were, well, all the questions were really good ones. Like, well, what is your opinion? Like, they wanted to know... Like, they wanted to know how to determine good judgment for themselves, and I think that's really important. Mm, I love ramen. Anyways, that's what dinner is tonight. Uh, instant ramen. Cook it with less water, much more flavorful. What we are going to be doing is the basics of combat. First of all, this is your map. This is how you get to planets. Now, for those of you ex who are experienced players, I'm not teaching you how to be advanced players. This is strictly for beginners, or if you don't understand something, I'm covering the basics on everything, on how to play the game. So right here, this is public, friends only. This means only friends can join your game. Invite only. Only people you invite can join, not even friends. And solo. For the purpose of this video, I am playing solo. And I think I am going to do the regular mission here, which is survival. Because that'll actually let me play without having enemies spawn until I am ready for them. Because I'm going to be covering what ship functions are in part two. This is only going to be combat, so this is going to be a shorter episode. I'm thinking it's going to be maybe 15 minutes at most, maybe 20 at most. But it's also going to be important. Like, I'm also covering how affinity gain or how experience gains work, how how to work as a team, like how to run for certain things, how to do this, how to do that. So this is still going to be important stuff. Okay, right there, at the bottom, do you see where it says Pistol Master? Every time you run a game, and I mean every time, you will have a, like, like a sub-quest. It will ask you to... Mm, I should just eat and then do this. I might do that. So every time you do the mission, it will give you a subquest. That means there is something that it will ask you to do, and if you do it, you gain extra quote-unquote experience. Now, top left. If you hit M, your map will switch, or it'll go back to minimap form. Uh, the yellow square is your target. If there is a red red like red symbol, that's an assassination mission, or that means it's a target of particular interest. That little square is that shows that there's a capturable item over there, but that's because I have a radio, mini map right here. Okay, movement. Movement is pretty simple. You walk around. Uh, you can double jump, which is a lot of fun. You can actually jump infinitely off walls as much as you want. However, if you jump under a ledge, you're kind of screwed, so you can't really do that. Uh, you can do wall run, wall hops. I guess it used to be wall running, and you could only do it for a limited amount of time. Uh, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, you can move around. You can crouch by holding control, so if I were to go over here and crouch, I could actually hide. Left click, or your right mouse button, I should say, is aim. Left stick is fire, or left click is fire. Now you can also fire like this, but it's a little less accurate. That is more accurate. Uh, you'll notice with stuff like shotguns, your view will actually narrow, or your aim will actually air narrow, and you'll get a little bit at better aim when you're crouching. Now. If you hit shift, you will be able to run. There's no longer a stamina bar. And if you tap it, you will roll forwards. Now, if you tap it backwards, you just roll backwards and to the side, to the side. 
pretty straightforward, pretty obvious. Uh, you can shoot crates like this and items will drop sometimes. That is an exploding barrel. You shoot it, it explodes. There you go. Now these, these are red, which means you can't open them. Depending how many people you run, sometimes they will be green. Walk up to them and hit X, they will drop stuff. That is how you get items, aside from killing people. So that being said, weaponry. Your Warframe can have up to four weapons. You have your primary, your secondary, your... Oh, you have three weapons. Your primary, your secondary, and your melee. Then you can also equip a companion. A companion is one of two creatures. It is either a sentinel, that is what I have. A sentinel is a robot that hovers around you, helps, helps do different things. I'm using the carrier prime one, which means it floats around and it picks up items for me. So I don't have to run all the way over to get to them, which is very helpful. Now, that being said, what is Prime? I said Prime. Prime are a select number of items that have been, that they've released a new version of that is more powerful, usually. And that is what Prime means. So, like, if I were to have a Warframe called, let's say Excalibur. If, well, Excalibur Prime is a lot more powerful than just Excalibur the regular Warframe. So that, that's what it means. Like it's more powerful, it's got better stats, or so on and so forth. Mm. Ramen is so good, so tasty, so bad for you too. Anyways. I really need to just sit down and eat dinner. But I was excited to make this because I want to help people and I want to get this video up as soon as possible. Okay. Now the other thing you can do are powers. Hold on, my cat's trying to walk on my computer. Had to scare him away. Each Warframe has a particular set of powers. Well, what are those? Oh, I should continue going over weapons. Okay, so your primary can be any number of things. They actually created a black hole launcher. They created a harpoon gun. There's a lot of different weapons. I am using a sniper rifle right now. So... It can be any number of things. It's it's really fun. Uh, that's one of the aspects of Warframe that makes it so enjoyable and so replayable is that there are so many different things you can do. Secondaries. Your secondary is almost always either a pistol or twin pistols. Uh, sometimes they'll shoot bullets, bolts. I'm using what's called the Sesta, which is a energy. So it's an energy projectile. And then you have your melee. Melee weapons can do a variety of different things. I need to move to where it's... I have a glitch right now where every time I walk, I, my weapon leaves a giant trail. So this is the... You can't really see it, can you? There we go. That's the Dark Sword. Uh, it has a special effect on it. It's a rare item drop. Rarer item drop. So nothing too special. But uh, weapons can be any number of things. You can use twin daggers. You can use single swords, double swords, hammer... Uh, great sword, you can use scythes, you can use hand scythes, so smaller ones. Uh, melee combat. If you just tap E, you'll do a set number of things. However, you can also change your combat up. A lot of people don't know that. If you tap and hold it just a little bit... You see how that combo was completely different? That is what you doing it. So each weapon has a unique combo that can be utilized. Also, with melee, you can block bullets, to a degree, and you can also do a couple of other things, but that is the basics of that. So, how do we actually fight? Well, I am going to trigger this by completing it. Basically, I have to hit spacebar when it's lined up. This mission is called a survival mission. They turn off life support, I have to get it again. You get life support by either A, killing people, or evil people. Or by B, uh, she will she the Lotus is on your side will drop for, uh, life support. So as you can see, they're attacking us. Now I am pretty strong right now. So as you can see, though, I'm not really taking all that much damage. I am now that I stopped. That's how that works. Okay, so I, I wasn't sure how that worked. What I was using there was power. Uh, each each Warframe has a unique set of powers. In my case, I'm using a new the newest Warframe release that is not the Prime access is Atlas. Atlas is basically a brawler. He's really fun. 
and he is an Earth user. So what I just did, that combo where I just punched everybody, that's actually his first ability. It's a three hit combo that will send people flying back. Each use, however, drains energy, so I need to be careful when I use it. Now that being said, if you hit Q, you can bring up a couple of different things. I'm actually using an energy restore though, so I can get more of my energy back. Now, I'm actually gonna use my secondary now. So it's not bad. It's not the best weapon by far, but it's not bad. And you already saw melee, so let's switch to my primary. Oh, typical sniper rifle. It's killing everything. Okay, so... When you have your melee weapon equipped, or your other weapons, you can also just tap E to use melee. However, you cannot use combos, so be aware of that. Anyways, his second ability, I can actually create a wall. Now, in that 100 at the bottom, that means it's 100% of life. So when it takes damage, it's going to reduce in percentage, and then I can roll it at people. His third ability is sort of like a Medusa's Eye. It deals damage to enemies and turns them to stone, eventually killing them. So, that's a helpful ability. However, his fourth ability is the fun part. He can create earth golems that just beat everything up. It's amazing. Like, just watch that. So they can be have your backup while, say, I was fighting over here. And, and so on and so forth. It's just, it's a lot of fun. The game is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. But... Survival missions are a little weird. As you can see, that life percent circle is slowly going down. Now, enemies are dropping life support, but if I were to run, this means that there is a tower incoming. But there's not one right here, so I'm going to go find the other one. Yeah, so those yellow squares that they're dropping, those are the ones that are the, the towers. Okay, good, there's one right here. Another life support capsule is now available. So when I activate it, it'll automatically increase by 70%. If you're playing in a group, usually consensus is do not use them until the life support is at least at 80 or at least at 40%. Because if you're fighting in a group, you don't want to waste percentages. And even more than that, if you are using it at when it's like 60 and you fight a wave of enemies, and you go and pick up a bunch of life support, you just wasted that tower. So that's generally what the uh, the consensus is. Oh, that's interesting. I found an invisible wall. That's hilarious. So I guess they just, they yeah, they just really didn't want you to be able to get past there. Oh, they don't have a problem with it at first. Yeah, they just... They, they don't want you to get back there. Interesting. Hello. Prepare for life support. Anyways, so that's the basics of combat, and that's the basics of that. So I'm going to go ahead and abort the mission. Also, if you leave a mission before it's completed, it doesn't matter if you're leaving because you get closed out or whatever. If you quit a mission, you will only pick up what you picked up. Credit-wise, you will not keep any resources. You will not keep... You will get minimal experience you won't really get anything, so it's never worth it to just quit out. So next we're going to cover different um, mission types, how to unlock planets, or no, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to do that in the next episode. This was just supposed to be the basics of combat. Um, no, you know what? I will explain the map. So you will start off with the basics, or oh, just a sec. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I decided instead of making constant little munch breaks, I'd go ahead and finish my ramen off. Oh, it's so tasty. I combine uh, the, the beef, just the regular beef, and just the regular chicken together, and it tastes so good. Anyways. Oh, my glass of Mountain Dew is half gone. Oh no, I've got to finish the episode quick. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, this is your stage selection. Now, what this means is, is I think to start, you will only have access to one, one planet. How do you get more planets? Well, you get more planets by... If we go to Earth... Where... 
Where aware oh, is that little? Where aware oh, has that little jerk gone? Oh, he's not here. Let's check Venus. Yes, Venus. Okay. So you will start. The, usually, the way you unlock access to new planets is by assassination missions. Assassination missions are quote unquote the boss. And what they do is they do two things. One, they will unlock a new planet for you sometimes. Not always, but this is usually where you get them from. But they also will usually drop Warframe parts. I'll explain that later. But this guy, the Jackal, drops the Rhino. So, we'll again, we'll go over that in a later date. But also, too, a lot of people tend to ask, well, what's the point of Warframe? You build everything yourself. It's kind of like a JRPG in that aspect, where you actually have to construct everything. But it's a lot of fun to do so. Well, how do I know where I want to get? And that's actually the most common question in the chat is, where do I get this? Where do I get this? How do I get this? What's the best way to get this? Generally, I have found any planet, if you click on it, it the missions will be grayed out if you hadn't completed them. I have completed them. That's why I, can, I have everything unlocked. But do you see where it says alloy plate, polymer bundle, circuits, and field drawn sample? That is a list of the four items that can drop anytime you kill anything on this planet. Each mission, or each planet, will have a different set, with at least one of that set being rare items. In this case, Morphics are rare. Morphics are really rare. Uh, I don't think this one actually has anything. I think these three are all common, or those four are all common. But the, uh, the field run sample isn't all that helpful, to be honest. So, But, like, the neurodes are rare drops. You will only ever find them occasionally. They're not common. So, how well, how do I get these rare resources? Or what's the best way to farm them? Well, this here we get into deep, deep weapon, or mission, mission types. So there is defense. What defense is, is you have to guard a particular item and stop it from being destroyed. There you go. Now, dark sector defense. Dark sectors are... They give you a huge credit boost. So, like, as an example, you saw in that last mission, even the little bit that I did, I still got about 3,000. Well, five minutes of running the Dark Sector Defense, this one, and I would have 13,000. So it's a really fast way to grind credits, and when you people do credit grinding, this is how they do it, is via that. Okay. So... But defense, sec dark sector defense, it's the same thing. The only difference is dark sector defense is always against the infested, which are, they're basically the flood. Exterminate. Exterminate means kill everything. Pretty simple. Um, this is mobile defense. Mobile defense missions are where you move from one place. It's, it's defense missions in like three different areas. That's it, literally what it is. Interception. Interception is king of the hill where there are four points, you have to stay in control of those four points, and enemies will try to take them from you. Capture is, you. it's kind of like exterminate, but exterminate, there's a limit to how many enemies you can do. Capture, there are endlessly spawning enemies, or there can be, and what you have to do is find the target before they escape, knock them, on, knock them take their, all their health away, and then you quote-unquote capture them, or turn them into data. Sabotage. Sabotage is you run through the game, find these machines or buildings, and destroy them. It's really easy. It's really simple. Spy. Spy missions are a little more complicated. You basically are a ninja, and you have to infiltrate a computer system without being detected and steal the contents. Later missions, these are ridiculously hard. Excavation. Excavation is also king of the hill, but it's, it's more like mobile defense than anything. A tower will drop. And you have to give it power to keep functioning. One second is equivalent to one... Or one power is equivalent to one section. Or what? Uh, I'm sorry, I... I blah, 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 blah. <laughs> one second of power is equivalent to one second of excavation time. So, but that's basically excavation. Uh, dark sector excavation defense that's assassination this one is really hard i don't recommend doing this unless you have an experienced player running it with you so that and then that i this is kind of weird ones so that's the general gist of it and then like stuff like mars has gallium which is a, a gallium and morphic so you have a chance of getting both <coughs> um 
So that's that's basically it. Just check the planets. And, oh, one that's different is Jupiter. Jupiter, for those of you that want... Or Saturn, sorry. Saturn is where you want to go because Saturn has Orkin cells. Orkin cells are extremely useful. They're also... They drop pretty rarely. So if you ever need an Orkin cell for something, this is where you go to get it. Okay, so now covering the other two, which is... Actually, there's going to be three. Dojo. A dojo, you get a clan key when you join a clan, and then you have to build... Then you can go to your clan dojo. Dojos do a bunch of different things. I'm not going to go into it here. When you join a clan, you'll find out what. Uh, Void. Void is... Void is the only place to get Argon Crystals, which Argon Crystals are A, extremely rare. Their, their drop rate is obscenely low. Literally, it's horribly low. But more than that, they're hard. Now, if it doesn't... Unless you have to form a team before you go into one of these missions. They are against a unique set of enemies. So don't expect... You're going to be fighting the Orokin faction. Not just Corpus, not just... You have to fight everything. And they each have their own missions. This is also where you get Prime Gear. Prime Gear is what you sell for cash. And that's also what you build yourself for what you need. So you can sell them for cash currency, which is super helpful. But I'm not going to go into the trading game here. So we will do that another time. Then Derelict. Derelict is actually one of the most important missions in the game. We're going to be going over what mods do a little bit later. But I wanted to show this because... Oh, I need to check. It's not what I needed. No. No. No, no, no. Ooh. I actually need one of those. Okay, I actually need to run that mission, so I will be back. In no, I won't do it. I can run it at any time. Anyways, that will. those are alerts. You can run them to get rare items sometimes. Uh, this is event tactical alerts, and these are missions. So, And then the other stuff, don't worry about it. <coughs> Derelict. Derelict is actually really important, and here we go, Nightmare. Nightmare mods will only drop from here. Nightmare mods are really good. They give you a double positive. Derelict mods... Derelict missions are the only way to get... Uh, corrupted mods. And corrupted mods are what is going to make or break you. They are what makes a powerful Warframe more than any other mod. Are corrupted. Aside from primed mods, which are very hard to get. And don't worry about them as a beginner. So, but just remember when we talk about mods, that's what that is for. Derelict is 25 to 30. They're very hard. Don't do them, again, unless you have an experienced player walk you through how to do them. Because they are not easy. They are difficult. Anyways, though. So that's the basics of the map and how, how combat works. So, the next video, I might break into three parts. So, I will see you guys in the next part. Thanks for watching.